Have you ever sailed around fully planning and just got overtaken from the back and no matter how hard you push you seemingly cannot match the other person's speed? This is probably because you don't have enough lift in your setup and don't properly rail the board. Hi, my name is Niels and on this channel you can find weekly videos on everything windsurfing related from tutorials to vlogs, travel reports and much more. So today let's talk about how you can rail your board to improve your speed. Railing your board means lifting the windboard rail of the board up to decrease the area of the board that is in contact with the water, which in turn decreases your overall drag and thus greatly improves your speed. Once you find the right body position and the right trim of your gear, getting into this kind of stance will become more or less automatic and it will be easier and easier to reproduce it every single time. So today I want to help you get there. We'll first be talking about the gear and the trim of the gear and then get to the technique that is involved to lift the windward rail. All right, the gear. The gear in windsurfing really works as a unit. There are a lot of different pieces from the boom to the mast to the sail to the fin to the board and everything plays a vital role and has to work together to create a perfect harmony basically. And this is why you see the professionals on the slalom tour for example train every winter for month and month and month and it's not just to actually train on the race course but also to find the perfect tuning and the sweet spot of their gear. The sail is the engine that drives your board. So when trimming your setup as a whole I would always start with a sail. We want the sail to feel balanced and powerful with a stable pressure point. To achieve this the sail needs to be able to breathe meaning the sail needs to release the wind from the third batten from the bottom. So, give your sail enough downhaul that it opens enough to release the wind like this from the third pattern from the bottom, to release the wind like this, but also don't overdo it. Because overdoing it will actually make the sail feel more unstable again. We want a stable pressure point to be able to put constant pressure onto the fin which creates the lift, but we will get to that later in the video. Most sail brands nowadays have a recommended downhaul setting marked somewhere in the top of the sail. And for most sail brands, this is actually a very accurate point. So when starting, I would always go from this point and then give the sail a little bit more or less downhole where the sail opens like one or two centimeters more in the top panel. But I personally like my sail to open around two centimeters more than the recommended setting, but that's probably because I like to sail pretty overpowered and thus want the sail to open a little bit more. But this you have to figure out for yourself. Once you find a good setting for the downhaul, you can start playing around with the boom height and the mast base position. Both of these settings will determine how freely your board will feel on the water. Moving the mast foot backwards will make the board ride more freely and moving the mast foot to the front in turn will make the board feel more sticky. The same with the boom height. If you move the boom up, the board will feel more free. If you move the boom down a little bit, the board will feel a little bit more sticky. For playing around with settings, I would recommend that you change the mast foot position only by half a centimeter and the boom height by not more than two centimeters. This will already make a huge difference in today's gear. So don't play with like five centimeters or something like this. Most people, including me, don't play around with their settings enough, especially when starting out to windsurf. And it is important to do this because you only will slowly feel the differences this will make to, your, to the overall feel of your gear. So start playing around with these settings and always remember only change one setting at a time so you know exactly if I do this the feeling will change like this because if you change more than one settings how can you know what part of changing the settings actually contributed to this feeling. The next and arguably even the most important aspect of your gear that determines the lift of your board is the fin. But to understand what the fin does we need to get a little bit into the technique and the physics to properly understand it and only then we can talk about what kind of fin you actually need to increase your lift. So what actually creates lift and the windward rail to rise while windsurfing? Let's imagine we go windsurfing without a fin. While sailing, the sail creates two forces. One force is going into the direction of the nose of your board, so forward. But also the sail will create a force to the leeward side that if we don't use a fin, lets us just drift downwind. So in order to go in a straight line, 
we need to counteract this force. This is where the fin comes into play. You can imagine it like this. The fin in the water actually works the same way that the sail is working in the air, only that the forces are opposite. The pressure we put onto the fin creates a venturi effect, meaning that there is more pressure on one side of the fin compared to the other side of the fin. And as we put pressure onto the fin, the fin creates a force that works windward. So it's counteracting the force of the sail. And these two counteracting forces of the sail and the fin allow us to go in a straight direction with only a little bit of drift windward. But to understand the lift, it's important to understand that there is a secondary force that comes into play. Now let's take this whole system and imagine that the fin is bending a little bit. Now, instead of the force just going to the side, there will be a little bit of a component upwards. And this is the force, or one of the forces, that is creating lift in the windsurfing setup. And this is the lift that I was talking about from the beginning. I know I'm explaining it very simply here and there's a lot more to this whole thing, but to just understand our gear, I think this explanation really serves us very well. That's why I'm bringing it up, because there's also kind of lift from the wind that is getting under your board and a whole lot of other minor forces. But yeah, just to explain it, this really simplifies it and I think is a good way to understand your gear. But let's get back from the more theoretical stuff to the more practical stuff and what this means for choosing our gear and our technique. The first conclusion should be pressure on the fin creates lift. And this is where the technique comes into play. Because knowing this, we want to put constant pressure on the fin to create lift. And you do this by getting your body as far away as possible from the center of the board so that you can actually put constant pressure on the fin. You want to keep your front leg very straight and your, back and your back leg a little bit bent. Also choose the right harness line length that allows you to get your body weight away from the sail. And in general, this is a broad generalization, but in general I would say for light wind, for most people the harness line length should be between 26 and 32 inches, depending on your body weight and height. And for higher wind it should be a little bit longer, let's say between 30 and 36 inches. So what will really help you while sailing is to just think if you're putting pressure on the fin at this moment. Because the moment you release the pressure from the fin, the board will kind of get out of control and you will lose this constant equilibrium of forces. So try to have as much body tension as possible throughout the whole of your run so that you will have a constant pressure on the fin and thus a constant lift on the board. If you want to learn more about this, I did a tutorial on the speed surfing stance a couple years back. I will link the video down below and you can check this out to get more details on the speed surfing stance. But let's get back to the fin. There are basically three factors to a fin that determine how much lift the fin will create. We determined that by bending it will create more lift. So naturally, a softer fin will bend more and create more lift. On top of that, of course, also a longer fin with more surface area will create more lift. But there's a third factor that is the width of the fin. A thinner fin will have less of a pressure difference between the two sides and thus will also create less force. So a thicker fin will actually give you more power, whereas a thinner fin, which is in theory faster because it has less drag, will give you less power. And we actually tried this with a fin brand I'm working for. We did a very, very thin fin and it works great when you go like super fast because then it will create enough force. But in the beginning, when you start to get going and planing, a thinner fin will have very little power. So it's actually kind of difficult to get into this fast riding position if you compare it to a thicker fin. So if you feel you don't have enough lift, in many cases it's actually because you use the wrong fin. Try a softer fin, maybe a longer fin, and this will help you greatly to generate this lift and the windward rail to rise up. And these steps should help you rail your board. Play around with the settings, with your fin, with your body position, and if you do this long enough, at some point you will reach this magical moment where the gear just seems to be flying over the water with the least amount of drag and you will just, it feels like flying and I love this feeling. Yeah, that's it for this video. The video was a little bit more technical than the videos I usually do. So if you stuck around to the end, thank you guys for watching. Thanks as well to my Patreons and all of my sponsors for making videos like this possible. And if you did enjoy it and watched until this point, why not subscribe and help me out to keep this channel going? I would appreciate it a lot. All right, see you next time.